Hey, hello everyone. Thanks for joining. How are you? See you. Hey Robert, can you hear me? Eli, Val. Test, test, test. Yes. Yep, can hear you. Awesome, fantastic, thanks. All right. So let's get this started. All right, so Supernatural Conjure. Um, I'm gonna be using my uh, the, the the small template for this one, and um, this style is is it's pretty easy. So um, it's basically if if we've got I always do this. So you you I always do this recap. So you've hear this many many times. But if love um, was basically major chords, diatonic type of harmony, and sadness was minor, then suspense was minor with a twist. Action with intensity is like suspense with the motor, and then we've got magic, which is just it usually is gonna be like major chords, but it doesn't connect the like the tr like traditional way, uh, and it's more instead of going from like the f you know like typical diatonic harmony type of thing, um, it's gonna either not be in one specific key or it's gonna connect from one key to the uh, to another modulating in a non as traditional way like five like like dominant of the, like the secondary dominant to the next one sort of thing it's gonna move by like parallel thirds ma major minor, minor thirds etc um so if magic fantasy is sort of that supernatural grandeur it's gonna be that um homophonic right so magic and fantasy is gonna be that type of harmony, but with a very fragmented type of orchestration, uh, with a lot of color, etc. Super, uh, super ultra grandeur is gonna be basically big instrumentation, large instrumentation, homophonic type of textures with choir, etc. The harmonies are going to be homophonic as well. Um, it can be completely homophonic, or sometimes you can have like a big melody and the homophonic background texture type of thing okay so let's um so that's that um i could read that's basically so what i described is what we've got here right tempo which range from 60 to 100 so generally this is gonna, gonna be slow slow with much uh without much rhythmic accompaniment so half notes being the fastest uh with more lyrical tones to be to achieve subdivisions sometimes we you know we can have that homophonic background sometimes we sometimes though we can have like our pages going up and down internal like in, inside sort of like the background material um sometimes when the melody lands at the climatic point we can have like scales and runs to sort of like enhance that moment that arriving or arrival moment uh for the melody but that's that's pretty much it um frequent use of open fifths for harmony um, that I that I haven't mentioned, but yeah, frequent use of open fifth, frequent use of um, of trias, frequent use of suspended harmonies, um, like these ones, sus four, seven, sus uh, sus four, uh, seven, sus four, nine, sus four, etc., etc. Mostly in major keys, if it's that sort of super like 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 positive emotion type of supernatural around there, like when the like I don't know when. The, um, like the end of Moana movie, it's a song, right? But if it was a score, um, like the ending of that movie, I'm not gonna spoil it, but um, if you've seen it, that could, you know, that could be supernatural grandeur. Um, like the Avatar movie, um, when we see that landscape for the first time, we could have supernatural, positive emotions type of feeling, um, type of music. And those would be major keys. Um, if it's the supernatural grandeur, like present, um, that's that's tied to the maybe like the like the bad guy or like the dangerous place or planet or um, then minor uh, to evoke that negativity in a supernatural grandeur danger type of scenario, right? Okay. Um, uh, frequently uses homophonic chord progressions, so mostly major. Uh, keys. Uh, frequently used um, homophonic chord progressions, frequently uses non-traditional chord progressions, um, and that's what we were talking about at the beginning, the way we connect those chords. It's not going to be... What do I have here? Yeah, okay. 
So these are orchestra. Um, so, hey Jason, how are you? Hey Molly, good to see you. All right, so it, it's not gonna be... Oh, one sec. So it's, so if this is, all right, where is it, come on, mm. one sec, um, let me just open the sequencer here, mm. I did it, where's my sequencer, why, do I, why don't I see my sequencer, did it crash, oops, where is it, mm. I'm sorry, one second, Mm. Yes. I'm sorry about this. I sometimes get that as well, Mark. What about? And then I uh, minimize all my screens, and then uh, it's back again, oh. <laughs> like my internet screen and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I can click it again. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so hopefully if I write, thanks, thanks George, I Robert. So if I record this guy here, and in fact, if I move it here, rather. All right. All right, so you can see this guy here, so you can see the notes that I'm in, as well this guy here. All right, yes, we're rolling. So, um, so for like major, uh, for like typical uh, love type of thing, C major, right? This is the first. Fifth. Type of harmonies, right? It's super, um, it's, not, it's not right or wrong, but it's, uh, it's a typical type of what we learned, like the f when we learn harmony, that's the first thing that we learn. Um, if instead of this connecting the chords this way, we move the chords by thirds, stuff like this, like if we do, Type of thing. Um, well, it evokes and it's, it's just another color, right? It evokes um, a different kind of feeling, right? So if and now if we orchestrate this, the if we orchestrate this as we described, right? Like peak large orchestration, homophonic type of orchestration, then the same thing, right? Nah, major. Right now, if on top of this we have a melody, um, that will be the melody that sort of that um, that goes well that goes well with this harmony, and I'll describe in a second what means goes well with this type of harmony. Then we've got that sound. We've got the super grandeur type of sound. Okay, so that's what I mean um, when uh, when I say frequently use uses non-traditional chord progressions. Triton minor major third relationship in the in the bass line right it's exactly what i what i what i did so this is c may hello one second what just happened uh here okay so this is sorry this is c major c major c major to b flat major right uh c major to e flat major and it's a uh, this minor third parallel minor third right So I was moving by minor and major thirds. Okay, uh, Triton as well. So if this is, if this is C, this is the F sharp, right? Which is the Triton. So if we go from C major to F sharp major, like if we do. Yeah, then type of thing, right? Um, another thing that that I like is when we are this style. If it's supernatural grandeur type, like like 
positive emotions type of feel, melodies go, like, like the melody direction usually goes up and the other way around when it's that darker, dangerous, ominous type of feel that we want to evoke. All right, so that's that for the harmony. It's very, very simple. Like, keep it simple chords, just connect them like the Danny Elfman-ish type of, um, so just major, minor thirds and tritons. That's it. And make it, um, so connect them by major, minor thirds or tritons and keep the chords very simple, like triadic major or minor chords. Major for positive, minor for dangerous type, type of thing or darker. Melody, melody, um, again, dominated homophonic textures. Sometimes the melody is just the lead note of that chordal homophonic texture. And um, frequent use of perfect intervals. So, so we're going to have triadic chords. But sometimes we're going to have um, like open fifths and fourths as well. Commonly use these counter melodies to bring... Uh, ah, sorry, uh, we're talking about uh, melody, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, so, so this type of thing... So, type of thing, right? This is didn't sound great because that the, this range for the horns are a little bit too too high but anyway but you get the idea so frequent use of perfect like fifths and fourths which we're gonna see this again for like the adventure adventure type of a style both for villain and hero um especially for hero and villain is gonna be that as well as more um chrom as, as combined with chromatisms as well all right but for this style, fifths, fours, and octaves, those perfect intervals work as well. So, um, commonly uses counter melodies to bring variety to the homophonic texture. This is optional in minor, seventh, and major. Ninth can occur when use, uh, when using stacked fourths and fifths, when building the chords, stacking fourths. And orchestration is going to be large. And it's going to be homophonic. And um, frequently uses choir as well, just to make it more make it bigger and more epic and larger, commonly place the melody in the in the high brass. Um, you can have the you can have the strings as well, you can have the tremolo strings, but when, when you wanna go bigger you can have the 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 high the mid and high brass horns and trumpets and you can double that with like with, with the with altos and sopranos as well, choir for the melody. Um, brass and choir blends very very well. Um, tenors and 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 horns work great. Like uh, the, this sometimes is gonna sound like Lord of the Rings type of thing, right? Um, as a note, if you if you watch online the uh, Lord of the Rings um, symphony, um, you see how like the timpani, horns, and choir go together all the time, right? And and um, anyway. Utilizes a very large instrumentation, predominantly built around the brass section, utilizing the strings family for support. Um, this helps give a certain cinematic feel to the music. Um, also, the the brass, that brass homophonic type of texture creates that um, big supernatural cinematic type of sound. Um, generally, the low brass sounds low, but doesn't provide provide as much low end as the low string section so the double bass is so having the brass doing that homophonic chordal texture and having the strings doing the same thing is going to support but it's going to enhance a little bit especially it's going to provide that a little bit more solid low end and lower register type like it just sounds lower the double bass sections uh, light brass percussion like timpani um tam tam tubular brass are common it's just going to be sometimes you can have the um uh, the cymbal roll again for that note landing the climatic moment um, that can help as well. Okay, so very 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 simple. It takes longer that to explain this than actually doing it. So, um, so that's it. Um, if um, if I defined the step by step, um, is um. So uh, for, for for those for 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 the new students that uh, 
I usually, I, once in a while I talk about this, right? The five layers. Um, so when I was, um, when I was, um, I was, um, when I was young, <laughs> when I was, when I was, um, I studied composition, uh, um, a few years ago, right? And it was uh, in Spain conservatory. I think it was, um, so when I, uh, when, when I when I when I got accepted to the Superior Conservatory, that's that's how it's called in Spain. Uh, we've got the basic, medium, and superior, which is like the three levels, right? And then it's just um, st st music in Spain is fifteen years career. The five the last five years is composition. If you specialize in composition, if you specialize in piano, trumpet, whatever it is, it's another thing, right? So the five last years composition, um, and I was a, I was a little bit younger than I was supposed to be because I started two years earlier. So I was 16, and I was supposed to be 18. And so I, uh, most of the students were a little bit older, and I wasn't, I wasn't great at the beginning. I, I, I wasn't. And so I, the first couple of years, I struggled quite a bit. And um, it was uh, in a small group, um, and uh, the teachers, like this is the European type of, uh, European classical music, contemporary music type of teacher, right? And it's... Um, it's not. It's, it's not like the. So when I started teaching at Berkeley, the, the 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 what the thing that that created it was like, whoa, this is so different. What caused this? It was like the teachers were nice. Like you would do some music, like you will you present the assignment, and the teacher will do like the what I call like the like the sandwich formula. It's like this is nice, good job, good job, good job. Here's the thing that you could change, but you overall you did a great job, right? That's sort of like the feedback type of a that gives you. Or at least when I enrolled to the first Berkeley course, that's the feedback that I got. It's like, oh, this is nice. This is uh, the European way. Is it's, it's harsh, right? This is it's like this is crap. This is really bad. You know, you won't be a composer ever in your entire life, right? <laughs> sort of thing. And the and the and the the rest of the students, in a way, at the beginning, they were. I I, I had a feeling that they were better than me, and so so I was yeah. just I uh, was. This the first Berkeley course, that's the feedback that I got. It's like, oh, this is nice. This is, Let me just meet you. And uh, the European way is, it's, it's harsh, right? This is... Thank you. Thanks for muting. Muting. Um, so... The composer ever in your entire life, right? Mute. All right. So what, why, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because at some point I developed a way of looking at music that simplified it for me, that allowed me to write both simple and complex music. But for me... It was it like mentally it was simple, and also the system allowed me when I've got this blockage of oh, I need to start writing, but I don't know what to do and how to do it. And I, um, it gives me a start a good starting point, and also when I'm writing music for a movie, um, it allows it helps me focusing on what the music has to do, what the music has to serve, right? Is it the is it the movie? Is it the story? Right and what to do musically to serve the story instead of focusing on harmony and counterpoint and thinking about all these musical things or even trying to feed your inner ego of I'm gonna try to do something that's awesome that makes me feel proud or that impresses my composer peers. This system sort of like helped me forget all this crap and focusing on what really matters, which is how what can I do musically that serves the story at the highest level, right? And so, um. So, um, so this system, I call it the, like the, the, the five layers system, right? And it's sort of like dividing for, for those who, who are new today. I uh, just wanted to explain this real quick. But direction, movement, background, and why is this happening? Why can't I? Oh, I see why it's happening. One second, one second. Wait a minute. This is going to happen again. And I'm going to, boom, that's it. So moment, uh, direction, movement, background, and and uh, enhancer and bass. Initially, the system was like the three layer system, right? And it's like music always has, music always has, let me make this small, at, uh, three possible layers, right? This is gonna be something that's gonna create direction, something that's gonna create movement, something that's gonna create background. Not the three at the same time, mandatory, but, but, uh, but, 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 but they can, right? This is always gonna be something that creates direction that moves the listener from point A to point B, and usually it's gonna be the melody, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the melody. Again, this system helps me disconnecting from thinking musical terms uh, and, um, and just thinking what is the music doing, right? What, what am I putting these notes here? What, what's the outcome that I'm after, right? And what, I, what do I have to do musically to 
to get to that outcome, to reach that outcome, right? And so there's something that creates direction. And direction can be like it's whatever moves the listener from point A to point B. And it can be a melody, yes, a melody that goes in a specific direction certainly you know moves us from point a to point b but it also could be like an increase in tempo increase in tension increase in orchestration increase on like texture uh like the, the ter- like texture darkness adding chromatisms and and dissonances etc right and it, it it moves us from something that sounds like major to something that sounds more like minor dark more chromatic right and uh, so it could be anything Again, it could be increasing tempo, increasing uh, dynamics, something that moves us from point A to point B. Then there's movement, and it's whatever creates a motor. Yes, it can be percussive bit, but it could also be um, anything that creates sort of movement. So a, a chord, you know, two chords going back and forth in a piano or in these woodwinds, whatever it is, right? Um, um, a string ostinato, something like this, right? And then something, whatever, whatever it is that creates that motor, what, that moves the music forward, that creates movement and momentum, all right? And then there's background. Background is everything else that's there that we don't realize that's there, but it's so important. And actually, so if we take it out, it's like, oh, I don't know what just happened, but um, something's missing, right? There was something that was cool, was there, was adding support, and now that I, now that's not there, I'm, you know, I miss it, sort of thing, right? So it's, it's the thing that connects everything else, it's the thing that supports everything else, right? It's, it's where the magic happens, it's why we love John Williams, basically, uh, um, if you love John Williams, is the, all the stuff underneath, the, the, it can be very simple, it can be just a solo clarinet long note, Right, and then on top of it, we can have other things, or it can be a very developed John William ish texture that, but it still sits in the background, and the and the and the, the like that texture is there just to provide support, um, and if you're an awesome composer, then you do cool stuff even in that background layer as well. Okay, and then we've got enhancers that we are basically talking about runs, scales, trills, whatever creates that sparkle ear candy, uh, and then the bass. Um, this. Bass, I added this as a fifth layer because sometimes we forget about bass and uh, in film music it's, it has such an important role. Just uh, like the bass, adding bass or removing bass, um, it can have such a dramatic impact. And also uh, in these days, modern cinematic or orchestral type of sound is more produced than 30 years ago. The bass is so important, taking care of the, of you know, of, you know, when we add the bass, how we add the bass, how we build that base part of the musical texture is very important. So I separate it as a, as a different layer, but basically it's what adds that extra low end, right? Um, cool. So that's that. So that, that with this being explained, if um, if I had to suggest um, on a step by step, I usually um, start with. I usually, depending on the style, I start either with uh, with direction or with movement. So, for example, for for action, I like starting with with movement, creating the motor. With uh, love, I generally start either with the, with direction or with background. Um, with this style, I like creating sort of like the direction and background sort of at the same time because it's an homophonic texture and it goes together. Um, but if I had to recommend, I start with direction layer and think melody and harmony at the same time. Think. Um, instead, I think the like, like create direction. So mentally, it's like okay, the music is gonna go from here to there, and try to create that melody plus emotion, which is the harmony underneath, to create that direction sort of thing. And then on top of that, um, you can add some subtle low hits with brass type of percussion, and you can actually um, optionally create that movement layer if you wanna add some inner motor to the texture, like what we talked about. Maybe uh, it's like um, subtle arpeggios going up and down, maybe arp or arp and cello, something or cello section, something like this, right? Um, and that's it, okay? So that's the style, that's the style definition. Um, so let's, uh, I'm gonna compose something real quick. So I'm gonna move here and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna move here, all right, this time it worked. I'm gonna go to the piano. Uh, and sometimes what I recommend is when you are creating this sketch, by the way, if you have any question, feel free to stop me and just ask the question. Um, but when I'm uh, when I'm when I'm creating in a sketch, I sometimes um, uh, choose a very uh, a specific instrument because it it just helps me for that specific style to sort of like 
get me into that style and that so for example for love I'll choose a piano and most most of the times I'll choose a piano to create the sketch but sometimes for like magic fantasy maybe I'll create I'll do the sketch I'll uh, and I'll use a Celesta maybe just because you know just evokes that sound already is a very typical instrument for that for that style for supernatural grand there sometimes I, I can I can do it with the piano I'll do it I'll do it with the piano at the moment I create the sketch with the piano but uh, what I could also select uh, as an instrument or as a patch could be this orchestral um, orchestra long patch just because this is a patch that has entire orchestra and uh, right and um, it just already gives me that sound, right? Because sometimes the problem that we have as the as a as a, as the comp as a composer is that um, we make things more complex than they really are. And the reason why we do that is for two reasons: why it's uh, one is insecurity, and the second is right. And the second the reason why we have this insecurity is because we start creating the sketch. And the sketch is there, and it sort of works, but because it's not orchestrated, we think it's not enough, and then we start adding more things. Or even when we are orchestrating, we start adding more layers, musical layers, because since the piece is not finished, it doesn't sound as it should sound. Um, and so we keep adding complexity, musical complexity that doesn't need to be there, that's not going to help the music, it's not going to help the, you know the goal that we like the story maybe i'm pretty sure it's not gonna help the story or uh and it's not gonna help the mix it's not gonna make the mix easy right the more stuff that we add the harder it is to mix to make the, the music sound good right to be able to hear every element because we're adding so many elements and uh, this style in particular for example is very very simple it's very simple musically an orchestration is just large orchestration everyone doing the melody everyone doing the background that's it basically and so using a patch that sort of helps you understand what's gonna be the final result. It's gonna also help you simplify the idea and not not overcomplicating it when you are composing. So in this, um, so that's just a suggestion. I'm gonna use the piano anyways to sort of so 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 you know so so you can hear how simple it actually is at this at the sketch um, level. Um, all right, so. Um. So, uh, what I maybe Torerim is going to be Sintori Torerim. I don't know all this. Let, let me just try it. Torerim Doridam. Sort of the ninth. I don't know about this. I don't know if we have to go this complex. But meaning it could even be simpler than this. But for now. Oh. 
リラロラリロリストとライクロリラディフラッメジャーロダリロ So this could be like an F So like an F flat major So this is basically an E major chord And the F major chord Alright That's sort of what we've got Yeah, yeah, this could. Uh, All right, I'm gonna orchestrate this later. I'm gonna give you 10 minutes or 15 minutes. But before I. What time is it? Yes, you're good. Uh, but before I do that. Uh, this could sound something like this. We could have a trumpet doing something like. Already, can you do? And then the horns down an octave. Down an octave here. The horns coming in. Already, dorida. Then the, the, the accompaniment would be so, like the background would be something like this. Tore long. Tore so the, this guy has choir, I think. Does it? Do I have it? Oh, it's not loaded. Anyway, but like, like full sustained orchestra. Sort of thing. Already, Torida. And then we could have inter we could have internal arpeggios going up and down with the cellos and maybe a, a, the arp to add a little bit of definition or cellos and bassoons, something like this. I'll reorchestrate this a little bit with 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 click and everything. But yeah, I got yeah, like the Hello. Oh So basically what we've got is this guy here. Oops. Let me make this a little bit bigger and you can see this here. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yes. Yes. Well, I made an ending, right? Um, doesn't necessarily have to have an ending, but you can imagine this like the the first time that we see the mountains and like the Avatar movie, the first time that we see that landscape sort of thing. <laughs> Type of thing, right? Ah, but it's a very very simple sketch. I like this having the mice here, but doesn't help with with this. Anyway, I'm gonna put it here for now. I'm gonna give you uh, f um, ten minutes, cause ten minutes to to come up with an, a sketch, just a piano sketch, something simple. Just experiment with the idea of not having to no, going non diatonic, just connecting the chords, but um, major, minor, thirds, or tritons, and keep it triadic major chords or triadic minor chords if you like like if you do yeah so triadic minor chords right like or, or going up
right type of thing. You get the idea. So basically, what I did is C minor do, um, and then um, so E flat minor and then F minor E minor right just darker more ominous or Lords of the Ring type of thing uh, is with what I did at the beginning oops sorry so C minor E flat minor or or um or, or connecting the voices a little bit like uh, instead of parallel movement right the ring sort of thing right so you get you get the idea all right, so I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna give you ten minutes. Let me know if you have any question before we we take this break. This ten minutes, ten, ten minutes break. All right, then it's your turn. Go.
Right, we're back. Come on, set. There we go. Awesome. Battery low. I know. Just get out of here. All right. So now the let's go composer mode, and um, let's let's do step by step. Uh, so how so how would we do this if we were to orchestrate this in seven minutes? <laughs> uh, I have a call at um, at ten, so I'll, I'll have to stop the class. Unfortunately, I can't go a little bit longer today. Um, so I think let me see. I would I would love to use the click. It's too fast. Already. Let Let's say that I used the click. I just wanna um, I wanted to include some internal. Uh, our page is going up and down. Now it's very it's just useful when I keep writing their pages if you can quantize because um, it helps if you are not a keyboard player. I am a piano player, but uh, but still not great. And uh, that helps with latency and all that. And especially if you are doing like a couple of three instruments, like let's say cellos, bassoons, and arp, right? Uh, it's it's gonna help align those. But anyway, let's um, for the sake of it, let's let's say that we record this. We recorded this to click, and I'm gonna record some internal, like a movement layer, right? So some our page is going up and down. So what we've got so far is already. So like triplet type of arpeggios, so it should be um, C minor. We're gonna go with um, staccato strings, sort of like um, high, like low string staccatos. Right, and then maybe I'll stay here. And then a second inversion. All right, yes, this. Okay. Ah, oh, tempo is so loose. Okay. So I ideally I would have a click. It'd be way easier. Click. Click, taka, 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 but just for the sake of it. All right, and let, let's, let's just pretend that, you know, if we had click, it would be way easier, but let's pretend for a second that this would be super hard to record. So the way we would do this, or, or the way I like doing this when it's hard and we, we can't record the entire thing, or let's say that you are a really um, bad piano player, right, as I, as I am. And so what I would do is I would record this region here. I would make this region bigger, and I would select everything and now I would go here and I would go to the low string staccato let's say that this was a cello staccato right uh, sorry um, uh, we said that we would go to all right so I'm gonna record this bit by bit I don't need to see all this I'm gonna just make all right. All right. and and now you've got a like a visual reference right so I know that I have to do Right, the landing point is this guy here. There's a clear rubato um, here slowing down the tempo. So I'll do what I can. So it's just like free tempo, right? Yes, toka toki 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 to, and then it's, it's uh, yeah, it's almost there. Dorem. I'm gonna record dynamic here. Yeah, it's sort of working. Dorem. Dorem. 
Sang Torin Tram den Dori da to dum Dorin Dori da dum Supposed to be and then Yep. Sort of thing, right? So with click would be easier. Way easier, right? Mark? Uh, yes, go ahead. Why did you decide not to do it with a click? No, because I don't have time. I would have to re yeah. everything. Oh, I understand. Yeah. But I would definitely 100% do it with click, <laughs> like 99% of the times. Uh, even like, yeah, yes. Um, but I, yeah, I didn't because I would have to re record these three parts that I recorded earlier and I didn't have time. <laughs> Recorded these guys here, sort of like, um, I would um, so if I would do this properly and I had more time instead of using the lowest stack of the strings, I would use like a fast legato cello patch, um, to do the the arpeggio, and maybe I would add um, maybe I would add um like a staccato cello just to add a little bit more definition. If I wanted to thicken that background module layer, I would add maybe a solo bassoon or a or an arp. Because an ARP, the, the ARP would do, would do a great job here. And uh, it would also help add a little bit of definition and attack to the cello sec, to the cello, like, uh, to the cello um, arpeggios. Um, cellos could, would do just fine, but the ARP would add a little bit of definition and attack to those, to those notes. Um, and that's, uh, that's it for that layer. And um, in the, if, uh, if I was... Um, like if I, if I had more time, the way I would orchestrate this is I, I, if I have the cellos doing this internally, I would have the, the trumpets and horns doing the melody, which are doing the high strings helping with the melody as well. Uh, maybe the violas doing a little bit of like sustained no sustain notes background. Uh, the double bass is doing the, the support down, the, down, down below here. Um, space in the middle for the for the arpeggios to cut through the mix to, for us to be able to hear that layer. Otherwise, at the moment, we've got not just, we've got the arpeggios, but they are conflict not conflicting, but on top of that, there's the like the sustained orchestra ensemble part, like very thick sounding, like long notes type of parts, which maybe it's not exactly what we want. I want to create a little bit more separation. Um, and so I would orchestrate it like this. is sort of like the developed sketch, but it's still not the finished, even though it, you know, it's like tricks. It sort of sounds the, um, close to the final thing, but it's. What not would you do with the uh, kind of the chords and stuff like that in the orchestra? Uh, the, because that's now conflicting with the uh, ostinato a bit, right? Yes, I would have chords, but since it's, I would have, 
So the background layer, I want it not to have too much weight. So maybe I can have like violins to and violas or just violas DBC, right? So I could have that layer there, but because it, the violas DBC doesn't have that much weight compared to the cello staccato going up and down or arpeggio going up and down, it's going to be there, but it's not going to conflict as much. At the moment, I have like this orchestra sustain patch type of thing, and I can hear the horns and the lower strings and the mid strings and the woods, everything doing that background, and it's just too thick and too powerful and too heavy so i would still have it there but just something that doesn't have as much weight yeah okay cool yep yep and plus would you mark yes go ahead would you use the uh the low the low brass for harmonic structure there i I would use the low brass for harmonic structure a little bit closer to the like to the lower end and that would and the cellos would conflict with it but just in the lowest notes wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't conflict that much. Um, also, uh, think about uh, the panning, right? So if you've got the violas, which is sort of like center, um, doing the background, and the cellos lines up and down, like the arpeggios up and down conflict with that a little bit. Yes, it does conflict, but it's in another, it's, it's, it's right, so it doesn't conflict as much as if it was center. Right, so we are distributing the layers, and then we've got the, the high violins doing the melody here in the left side with the trumpets, right and horns left so big melody left right with high tr- like higher register for trumpets and lower register for horns with the higher registered strings uh compensating left right with the higher register melody uh over the left so big pan big open melody and then sort of like the center sustained uh, violins uh violas and then left sort of like the mid low register um the cellos arpeggios and then lower in the register we've got double basses and maybe the, the low brass low brass long notes i would go yes with yes sustain long notes harmony type of um, homophonic um texture so that's it and then we can have the woodwinds we can have the low woodwinds as we said the bassoons helping with the cello and then maybe the the, the high woodwinds flutes helping the brightening the melody a little bit i think a little bit maybe we can have the piccolo up an octave with the trumpets uh, or the flutes up an octave with the trumpets maybe uh, adding a little bit of brightness and um and uh, yeah, that's basically it or we can add like an internal rhythm but we, we in general we keep we want to keep it as homophonic as possible would you use the uh, the lower woodwinds with the trombones for the for the more the pad? Depending depending on what you want. So if you want a little a little bit of more of that heroic sound, jo- uh, usually the the bassoons are gonna soften the trombones um, in a very subtle way because obviously the trombones have so much more power than the than the, the bassoons. But when uh, in general, it's being said that when you want that big epic triumphant heroic brass sound type of moment and usually it's just brass and you can have woodwinds as well like the high woodwinds to add a little bit of brightness and sparkle but the bassoons are going to soften because it doesn't have that much of an aggressive sound it blends well but it's going to soften it's nothing wrong with it it's not going to sound as heroic um so in this case for the low brass if those are the, the bassoons i would prefer having them with the cellos because it's going to add definition to that cello line and it's, it's going to work especially well with samples because cello, legato, fast legato, arpeggio line is going to be hard for a sample library to, to sound convincing. Not for the uh, like bassoon's legato or bassoon solo legato. It's going to, those usually work well and um, helps adding realism to the line. So I, for this specific purpose, I would have the low brass, uh, the low uh, woods helping the, the, the cello arpeggio line. Um, and maybe the, the, the contrabassoon, maybe I have no need to use the contrabassoon, maybe. And if I'm using contrabassoon, maybe it would go with the tubas. That, did, did that answer your question? Does it make sense? Yes, thank you, Mark. All right, no problem. My pleasure. All right. Um, any other question before we go? Mark. Hey, Molly. Uh, what you said just now was like super helpful. And I was wondering, I mean, I'm talking about the, the blending, like uh, things like, you know, uh, you were saying, you know, like when you add bassoon to like a brass and then I just soften the sound that uh, first, for like, and or like the cello arpeggio does not work so well in samples. I mean, like those are like really helpful tips. And I wonder if you could like give us some more of those, like in the future or even, yeah. even yeah. better, if you could just gather all those tips for samples, <laughs> mock up. 
somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, that's one thing. And another question, uh, when is our next assignment review? I don't Say. know. I don't know. That's 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 a that's a, a tricky question, uh, calendar. Is it I want to know how much time I have left <laughs> to finish my track. <laughs> All right, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, Carver Loom. I don't know, it should be, uh, um, okay. I, I have, I, I, I have, I have, no. to, ask, I have to ask my wife, <laughs> I have to ask Ali, um, I don't know, I don't know, it should be, it should be next month at some point, um, second week or something like this, we are going to be, um, I think we, uh, after the ninth, after the ninth, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be there because um, because Dennis Sands launch is on on the ninth. Actually, you'll have access one day before that, but uh, but the, the official launch is gonna be on uh, on the ninth, and that I'm pretty sure it's gonna be uh, hectic till the launch. Um, Putting the course together, editing videos and all that in the in the in the in the, in the launch itself, and so I guess uh, it would be. It would, it, it's gonna make, but but I see it's not a schedule, so and I don't schedule them. Usually, someone else scheduling is either Alex or or Ali, and so I'll ask and I will let you know. Okay, let me just jot okay. this down. Give, give me like a like about a week notice. Okay, so well, no, know. yeah, definitely, it's gonna be. I, it, it should be three weeks. And, and the, about the other question, think about like what are the what, what are the things that don't do, like syncestration is just tricking the listeners. What's go, what's what's wrong with the with the sample? But why does doesn't it sound good? Well, you know, this there are technical difficulties that make samples not. Sound yeah. So realistic. so for me, I just often feel like, for example, like when I'm doing because I'm not very experienced uh, with these yet, and so. Um, like, you know, I feel like my, the, the, the way I compose or records are like so similar to yours, but somehow your finished product is always better than mine. <laughs> it's like, it's like, so, and I, and I know like sometimes like when I am, um, uh, composing, like, you know, like I, I'm not sure if it is just me being, uh, inexperienced. Like I just, I don't, I mean, I don't know if it's a technical issue or it's just like the nature of samples well you know you uh what's your instrument like, uh, piano, is, right? is, is, it, is it like you know like i don't know if it's because my library is not good enough or because i don't know my libraries well enough to know how to use them or just the nature of simple mock-up what I, is I'm not, what yeah, is your I, instrument the piano right? uh, piano 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 yeah. what piano do you have i have a yamaha wait are you are you talking about the real piano or yeah, the yeah, yeah. The, the, like the real real piano i have a Stanway. Okay, Friend. fantastic, awesome. How long have you had that piano for? Ten years. Ten years. All right. Yeah. Um, do you know that piano very, very well? Is that a question? That is a yeah. question. And you yeah. know exactly how hard you have to press like the low notes to get right. that specific tone. Well, because you've been using it for ten years, right? Yes. When I'm, when I'm using these libraries, and the, some people is like, those are all libraries. Why don't you use the new ones like this? Like, if I open this, not just Albion is the old version of Albion. People is like, what is this version of Albion? Well, it's the 2009 version, like 2010 version of Albion. Haven't updated. Uh, I do have the new version because blah blah blah. But. Uh, the, the basically what I'm saying is that yes I use new libraries but I know and when I open my my old template thing when I open my old temp my big template it, I I it, I know everything so damn well it just is is the so I know the I know where my samples sound good I know where my samples sound bad I know what to do to hide those so I know them very very well so you answered your question it's not that your sample libraries are not good is that you still you are still experimenting and learning because we are, you, we, you know, we've mentioned this several times. We are composers and musicians and performers, right? When we are composing, actually, and we are making like this is, this is not a great idea. This is just, you know, yeah, it works, but it's not, it's not genius. Not I still understanding. Making it sound good is making the music like, like if like the LA feel or like the London feel would perform this. I would sound like if I would orchestrate it properly, it would sound amazing. Now, like a high school orchestra, uh, it wouldn't sound the same. It's the same notes, right? So when we are performing, we are getting out the, the uh, we are getting the most out of our samples. And an experienced synchestrator will do a better job than someone who just bought a live like or who's just starting to experiment with samples and when the new libraries that 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 they've added to their um, 
palette, right? So hopefully but, that makes sense. But the things like you say, so yeah, when you mentioned like a cello arpeggios don't work so well in some samples, that's not just specific library. It's like they usually are just not like, like for example, like uh, string legatos like harder um, to, you know, for, for mock-up, it's like a string legatos are like, don't usually sound as realistic as say, you know, like the, the staccato tremolo, like the sh shorts. Um, I actually didn't know that before, uh, before I joined uh, cinematic composing. I just thought like, you know, I, I can't do the legato well. Like I just thought it was, I always thought it was just me. I didn't realize, oh, it's a little harder for samples. So, I mean, I feel like I'm still at that stage where like, I'm not sure if it is me or just the nature of samples. That was actually my question. I feel you. Yeah, absolutely. When yeah. I bought my first sample library back in 2004, Orchestral Cube, Orchestral Cube uh, Vienna Symphonic Library, I, lo I thought I was, you know, it was like I, w I, w I saved to buy that library for years and I bought the library and I thought my music is gonna sound freaking awesome so I loaded the, I loaded the woodwinds I loaded the strings and I started I had a composed piece in finale and basically I just connected finale with logic and I thought that when I would hit play everything would sound beautiful and wonderful so the first chord it was like a woodwinds long notes it was like oh my gosh this sounds great right and then like the strings melody came in and uh, I loaded the uh, strings legato pads back in 2004. Like legato was like unheard of, and basically like that, that it was uh, something that the Vienna Symphonic Library was experimenting with, and uh, and also expression modulation. Basically, finale was triggering volume data instead of modulation. So, and when I hear the second note, it's like oh, this doesn't sound realistic at all. And I realized oh, there's, there's so much work to make this sound realistic. But then I started experimenting with the legato. It's like there's no way for me to make this, and I thought it was me it's like what's wrong with with what yeah you know, i'm missing I, I may be missing something i must be missing something it's like and then i realized like when these still these days when uh you know when you watch the library reviews and the i don't know the composers and youtube reviewing the library and sometimes like oh this legato sounds actually pretty decent pretty decent and it's like yes yeah, it's, it's still these days legato especially fast legatos and especially fast legatos with with big jumps Right, like, uh -huh. like this is a cello legato, cello legato here. What just happened? Cello legato. You know, it could, it could, we could say this sounds decent. Now, big jumps is not gonna sound realistic because it's and. And especially when we repeat the notes. So basically, if we have an staccato, something like this, they repeat eight, they record eight repetitions of each note. So each note we hear a different note is being recorded. Round robin. Exactly, round robin. For the legato transition, they record it once because the transition is just so many, right? right? They, they have to record transition between C and C sharp, C and D, C and etc. All these transitions for an octave for each note up and down. So it's 16 transitions plus that's a pianissimo, then a piano, etc. So they have for each note, they have to record a hundred transitions and then for the next one and the next one, the next one, the next one. And then so if and, and then if you start doing something like if you start going back and forth, like the typical, super typical suspense type of doi or type of thing. The reason why it doesn't sound realistic is because the transition gets repeated over and over again and then it sounds machine, machine like, okay. like a machine gun effect. And so that it, it takes forever, like it technically is harder to build a legato patch. And so, and, and then to avoid, you know, like to, to, to reduce resources and RAM load and all that, they compromise some things. And so a very good sounding legato patch can take gigs. And so and, and, and even with that, still it's not perfect because the legato technique it implies so much. A machine has a harder time producing a legato than a like a pro human, as I call it, like mm -hmm. a pro musician will do a much better big legato. Every, every legato is gonna sound different. Depending on the emotion, the legato is gonna transition differently. That's what makes the music sound musical and alive. Yeah. That's why. That makes we just sense. hope this, so we just hope that it would just keep getting better yes. that in the future. Yes, it will. It yeah. will. It, it, it is getting better. There are, there are libraries that sound way better. And uh, the experience, like, and 
And I'm not saying that uh, legatos doesn't don't sound good. Legatos do sound good, and especially these days, the library sound way like way better than back in the days. So that especially like the high but like the high strings usually uh, harder time. Like, but yeah, libraries sound way better these days. And that uh, there are adaptive legatos. There are like techniques that's like depending on how you transition, the legato is going to be faster or slower, more a uh, little bit more portato, glissando, depending on the velocity. So you can control all those things. Um, it's not new. I, and the more control that you have, the different. Um, um, is, I don't use this library, but um, uh, LA scoring strings, they also have brass and the, they have that adaptive legato. And the, depending on the many factors, the velocity, the expression, the modulation, the, the legato is going to be different. And then there are other libraries that you can blend, like the staccato for the next note or the sforzato for this next note. So it sort of like adds attack to the next note in the legato so you can do all these things that naturally happen when a musician performs that the library will sound more mechanical unless you just like color in a way that legato and add variations to that legato okay. so yeah all right i've gotta go though um but i've gotta go but um but, but we'll continue next week um with the next style okay mark yes one quick technical question art um, when you're when you want to change articulations in the strings, yes, use key switches. How how to switch from one to the other? How do you do that? All right, I know that's a long answer, but no, 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 not at all. It's it's very very simple. So um, so there are two there are two approaches. Um, so you either do what you want to do, like changing articulations with key switch and all that. Uh, we'll, we'll keep your template more organized and less tracks, or you've got separate articulations, like like for example, this this one I've got. Yeah, there. then you have to set up the separate track. Exactly. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so key Can switch, you do it in the same track though? Um, if you use key switches, you're, you're gonna do it in the same track. If you if you have separate articulations, it's gonna be separate tracks. Uh, it's very simple. The, it's there's there's not a, see if you want to have a track that you know that has different key switches. Basically, there are patches that already are built with key switches, and the only thing that you have to do is find those patches that come with with key, key switches. For example, if I come here and I load uh, this patch that has key switches, like for example, I'm gonna go to um, Cine Strings from Cine Samples. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go Violins One Articulations. And that or this patch uh, already has the key switches, and uh, I'm gonna go here to show the key switches. And uh, let me just select this one. And so basically, what's happening now is that down here, here are the key switches, right? Yeah, down here. So this is the staccato. The second one is a longer staccato. This is the third one, longer staccato. Legato. And then we've got the tremolo and the trill. The key switches are already set up in the, in the, in the software? Exactly. See, the, here uh, it says all the, the, the different... Um, Can you reset the them? Oh, yes, you can reset them. You can change them, see? I'm changing the... The this I can change it. This this one here. I can put this one. I put, could, could put this one here if I want it. So yes, uh, you could you could uh, reorganize every library. You can reset where you want the keys. Like what key do you want to change the articulation? Gotcha. Um, there are libraries that also give you different options. For example, the Cine Strings from Cine Samples, and they give you the options to switch articulations by either key switching using different keys. Also, you've got the option of velocity map, which means uh, depending on the velocity, if, you, if it's softer, then it's going to be a, a shorter staccato, louder, uh, so harder is going to be a longer staccato, right? So you can do type of thing. Yeah, but then that doesn't allow you to do dynamic contrast. Exactly, and then they give you modulation, this guy here, to control dynamic, which is, I, I don't like it, sort of thing, right? Um, I, I'm not used to... Oh, I see, like this. yes. But that's like spinning plates. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is a Mike Mike Patty thing. Um, he likes composing that way. Mike Patty is the, the co-founder of, cinema, uh, of Cine Strings, of Cine Samples, and uh, he composes that way, and so... But I never got like oh, it's like ah, I don't like it. Um, combination of both key switch map. There's like different options how you could 
um, switch between our, our articulations. But I like key switches, just keys. Thank you, Mark. No problem. I like your haircut. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> three months as I was like, yes, I know I'm getting mine this Thursday. I can't wait. <laughs> oh man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. <laughs> Have a nice week. I'll Bye. see you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.